Today we're releasing the results of the much anticipated independent report on a potential Alberta pension plan. Their final report shows that an APP could mean tremendous cost savings each year for Albertans and employers while providing at least the same, if not better, benefits as the Canada Pension Plan. That report estimates that Alberta should be entitled to a $334 billion asset transfer from the Canada Pension Plan, but a professor of economics questioned that calculation. I disagree strongly with the government's interpretation of the act and don't believe a reasonable interpretation would lead to so much going to Alberta. To discuss the report's findings more, Alberta Premier Danielle Smith joins me now. Premier, welcome back to the show. My pleasure. I'm hoping you can help me with the math because this report estimates that Alberta would be entitled to $334 billion in assets from the Canada Pension Plan, and there's only $570 billion there. So how does one province get more than half of the total assets from the CPP? Well, the, the, the plan was created in 1966, and the formula for how you would set, create a separate plan was updated in 97 and then updated again in 2019. And this is just a measure of how much over-contribution Albertans have had into the fund, plus the compounding over time that has occurred. So uh, the calculation that LifeMark, formerly Morneau Chappelle, has done is using the existing formula based on those existing contribution rates. And they came up with a number of $334 billion. So we're putting that out to Albertans and giving them an idea of what kind of impact an Alberta pension plan would have with the transfer of assets that's significant. Well, there's some questioning of that, though, right? Because we've seen some numbers and some skepticism from University of Calgary economics professor Trevor Toome, who, who says he doesn't believe that that's a reasonable interpretation and that Alberta would get that large of a share of the CPP assets. So how could this work if your math is wrong or if there's no way to get the money you need to make this work? Well, I, I guess what I would say is that uh, Morna Chappelle, um, now LifeMark, is an expert in actuarial science or an expert in pensions. That's the reason why they won the RFP. This is the second run at doing this report. There was an earlier version. We wanted to make sure that we ha had the updated numbers. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm wel I'd be welcome to see other analysis, but this was very comprehensive, took a long time to do. And I, I trust that they are looking at the legislation and they're, they're making a fact-based uh, finding for us so that we can make the, the decisions we need to in our province. It would have a profound impact, though, on the rest of Canada, Premier. I, I understand you say this is a better deal for Albertans. I know it would be cheaper for Albertans but it would take away more than half of the assets for the Canada Pension Plan for the rest of the country, excluding Quebec, and force them to pay more on an individual level and on a company level to maintain the Canada Pension Plan. So how could you move forward with it, knowing those are the consequences? Well, I guess I'd put it the other way. Um, we have 4.5 million Albertans that have been overpaying to be able to fund a program that is supporting 37 million Canadians. And how can that continue? Because it, what we've seen is that if we were able to take our own pension plan, we would be able to reduce premiums by $1,425 per employee and $1,425 per employer. That's a measure of how much we are overpaying in order to be able to subsidize the rest of the country. Conversely, if the rest of Canada had their own plan and had to uh, increase premiums to account for Alberta's um, departure, it would result in a $175 increase for an employee and a $175 increase for an employer. So this is why it's sustainable. We can't keep relying on a small province like Alberta to overpay on every single government program. This is just one example, and this is what we're putting to Albertans to see if they want to make their own a different choice. But isn't this the way these collective programs are supposed to work, that everyone pays the same amount so that everybody, regardless of where they live, can qualify for the same benefit? I, I mean, are you saying Scott Moe needs to tell his private sector that in Saskatchewan they need to pay more, people in Saskatchewan should pay more if Alberta pulls out. I mean, that's the message you're sending to the rest of the country. Well, the message we sent to the rest of the country with the Fair Deal panel and the message we sent to the rest of the country with the equalization referendum, where we asked to have a reconsideration of equalization that 62% of Albertans supported, is that we don't believe that we're being treated fairly by Ottawa, we don't feel, feel we're being tra treated fairly in Confederation. That's, what, that's where the, be the beginning of this all, 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 all came from. And so uh, the federal government ignored our referendum. And this is an area where we actually do have some control. We have statutory authority and constitutional authority to run our own pension plan. We have a formula that gives the 
the pathway for how we would be able to establish our own pension plan. We have to we have a guarantee that the benefits will be the same or higher. We have a guarantee that the contributions will be the same or lower. We have a guarantee that all of the uh, the funds will be put to the establishment and operation of an Alberta pension plan. And we also are going to put it to a referendum of the people. So I would say that uh, we we were we tried to begin this conversation a number of years ago, and unfortunately. I, I don't know if perhaps Ottawa didn't take us seriously, but we're serious about having a look at this, and I'll be interested to see what Albertans have to say. Right, but equalization, I know you've used that example a couple of times, but every dollar of equalization is from the federal government's taxing power. None of that comes from your coffers. I mean, it may come from Albertans and Alberta businesses who get taxed, but I'm from Newfoundland and Labrador. They get taxed. They don't get equalization. That's just the way certain programs work, right? Is it not? I, I mean, you're talking about really disrupting collective support programs that sort of bind the country together. Well, we're trying to educate the country that every single program is stacked against Alberta. Alberta is asked to pay well more than it costs to, to provide the program, and they receive far less in transfers than other jurisdictions. I remember looking at this a few years ago when Alberta and Quebec were pay, paying roughly equal amounts of federal taxation, about $50 billion. That same year, we got about $25 billion back in right. federal transfers. Quebec got $70 billion back in federal transfers. So this is, I guess, the frustration that we have, is that why is it that every single program is designed to disadvantage my province, and every single program is designed to give a super advantage to all the other provinces? I think that this is just an example where Albertans have said, you know what, we want to have a look at it, see if there's a better way, and I think there is a better way. Well, right now you have one assessment of the amount of money you would be entitled to take from the Canada Pension Plan to put in a possible Alberta pension plan. Don't you need to have all of that negotiated in advance if you're going to put that to a referendum so you can go to Albertans and say, this is exactly what we will get and this is exactly how it will affect you as we ask you to vote for or against this particular idea? Well, we've started the conversation, and the way to start the conversation was to give the, the best estimate that we have based on the legislative framework and the constitutional authority with a company that ha has, I think, respect all across the country, and in particular because of its, uh, um, its ties to the current federal government. It'd be hard to cast aspersions on it. So um, we're ha we've started the conversation. We'd be interested in seeing what, uh, what others have to say about it, but we're going to go forward on the basis that we hired the best company, they did the work, this is established in law, and we're going to, to consult with Albertans on what they'd like us but, to do. But, but don't you need something locked down completely? You know, a, a formalized agreement between you, the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board, the federal government, the other premiers, uh, to put to Alberta. This is exactly what this will mean for you if you vote yes on this plan. Well, I think that would presuppose the outcome. I mean, I, I looked at the numbers uh, because I it was one of the things I asked my finance minister as soon as I got elected. I said, why are you so enthusiastic about an Alberta pension plan? What do you know that I don't? And he showed me the numbers and I was gobsmacked. And I thought, wow, Albertans need to see this. And Albertans need to make that choice and make that decision. So that's the that's how I'm going forward. Is that I want people to see the numbers first and see if they're as persuaded as I am. We want to de-risk the decision so that they know 100% of the assets are going to go to for the fund. They will either see an increase in benefits or a decrease in contributions or both. And it's their choice. If they if we get a clear indication that Albertans want to go to a referendum, we'll have a referendum. If we get a clear indication that they're quite happy continuing with this imbalance where four and a half million Albertans continue to, to pay a larger portion to fund a program for 37 million, then that's the way it goes. But we will get that feedback as we do the, the panel. The panel is being led by a former treasurer, Jim Dinning, a former member of the CPP Investment Review Board, Mary Ritchie, as well as Moin Yaya, a, 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 a law professor from the University of Alberta who was on the original Fair Deal panel. And I think they'll give us good advice about whether there is an appetite for a referendum. And if there is, then these uh, issues, as you point out, will have to be pinned down for sure. One of the strengths, though, of the Canada Pension Plan is that its investments decisions, its benefits decisions, they're removed from politics. It's done in a nonpartisan way. And there's already people suggesting that if you get control of these assets in Alberta, that maybe it becomes an investment fund for the oil and gas sector. And that could potentially mean politically motivated investment decisions that put retirement savings at risk for an industry that, as you know, is under some pretty serious global pressure. So how would the investment plan for an Alberta pension plan be managed and would it be removed in shelter from political whims? That decision hasn't been made yet. We did get an estimate from LifeMark about what it would cost if you used an existing service provider, and there are many. We have service providers who have capacity to manage uh, 
billions of dollars in funds uh, that we could use. We could also keep it with the CPP investment board as a segregated fund and anything in between. So I, I don't want to presuppose what, what that decision will be as well, acknowledging the, that we will probably get feedback about, from Albertans about, about what, would they, what they would like. Would, would we want to model it more like the Caisse de dépôt et placement in Quebec, or would we want to keep it with the CPP investment review board, or is there some other model? I, I don't think those decisions have been made yet. We do know that the range in cost of one versus another using an existing service provider could cost as little as 175 million. Establishing something brand new from scratch could cost as much as 2.2 billion. So certainly we'll be able to get feedback on, on what people would like to see. And that'll be part so, of the consultation. But Premier, don't you need all of that locked down before you have a referendum to decide whether you're going to proceed with this? Because it feels like the fine print, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about my retirement and the fine print really matters. Don't you need all of that fine print there for Albertans to see? No, I think that because the amount of asset transfer is so significant, $334 billion, it, it, it amounts to about 28 times the amount of assets that you need to, to fund the liability that we have. Compared to right now, I think the, the CPP uh, fund is about eight times its uh, the asset value. And so it would be actually be more stable. It'd be a large enough fund that we'd be able to compete internationally with the largest sovereign wealth funds in the world to be able to get the best management. And we're de-risking it by making sure that you don't have to pay higher premiums and you wouldn't get lower benefits. So I would say that the financials on this are pretty clear. The, the question is, it's an emotional uh, decision. It's, um, if, it's whether Albertans think that they want to continue providing this subsidy, whether they want to continue paying more uh, to, be, to be part of a plan that is uh, so clearly bi biased against them. And if Albertans make that decision, that, uh, that will be one of the things that, that we'll have to be mindful of. This is Albertans' money. It's Albertans' choice. I may be persuaded, but I, I need to make sure that Albertans are persuaded. Well, just as a final point, you're going to be speaking with Albertans, consulting with them. Have you talked to any other premiers? Have you talked to any of the provinces about your intention here? And what feedback have you gotten from them? My finance minister, Nate Horner, has he was making phone calls last night to give a heads up to finance ministers that, the, that this was coming. You begin a consultation once the numbers are on the table. And so now the numbers are out there. I'm sure we'll get an awful lot of feedback. We'll engage in a lot of discussion. I'm anticipating this will take several months before we get the feedback. I believe we're anticipating getting the report back from the panel in May of 2024. So we have an online survey site, albertapensionplan.ca, that people will be able to go on to. We'll be doing telephone town halls that Jim Dinning will be leading. We'll be doing uh, town halls as MLAs. And I'm sure we'll get a flurry of, of activity into our, our constituency offices. All of that will go to help giving us an idea of whether or not Albertans want this to move to a vote. So were those finance ministers happy with your plan? What did they say? Uh, I, I, he didn't convey that. I think it's difficult to, to know what uh, the finance ministers will say until they see the, the, the information. We had to get the, the, the data out there. It's been in the works for many, many years, and now people will see it, and they'll be able to respond, and that'll, that'll also be one of the things that we have to consider. But the, the main consideration I have is what's best for Albertans, and Albertans have been overpaying for a long time. I know that this would give them uh, higher benefits, lower cost, and um, a more secure asset, and that's, that's my number one priority is to take care of Albertans.